In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, Paul said, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to nothing things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, he doesn't pick the best, the brightest, and all that kind of stuff, generally. Why? Because they would glory in how smart they were or their talents. But of, now get this, but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. What's he saying? Now see, here's the difference. And he's talking to carnal believers, and we see it in James. Carnal believers say, I need wisdom. I need the wisdom. I need this. And, but now notice in, in the Corinthians, Paul was trying to tell them, you don't understand. You're still carnal, and you don't get it. You don't have to ask for wisdom. He was made wisdom to us. So he in us is wisdom. So that wisdom is there. So it's not a matter of asking for it. It's recognizing that wisdom abides in you. Now, I'll try to give you an example if I have enough time. Well, I'll go ahead and, go ahead and do it because it ties right in. You can, if you've ever lost anything, misplace something around the house, car keys, something like that, right? Whatever you're looking for. And now, most people just search and search and search and search and search. Unsaved and even saved will do the same thing. <clears throat> then, after they've done everything and looked everywhere, then they go, Father, show me where my keys are. When that should have might have been the first thing, right? Instead of after, <clears throat> you know, exhausting all the physical stuff. And then they'll stop and go, Father, uh, show me where my keys are. And you expect him to give you a word of knowledge. The keys are here. And sometimes they'll give that to you in a picture. And you'll go, oh, I see them. They're in that drawer. And you can see them later. And you go do that. See, that's a gift of the Spirit. But now, that's not the mind of Christ. That's a gift of the Spirit. But we have the mind of Christ, which means instead of saying, okay, I need to know this, I need to know that. No, no, no. You already have the wisdom. You have him. In Jesus has hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Isn't that right? So all of that wisdom. So where your keys are, he knows where they are. Now, you can ask him. That's what most people do. That's carnal, okay? But the spiritually minded Christian decides, you know what? I already know where my keys are. Why? Because he knows and he's in me and I have his mind. And then you just get up from the table or wherever you're sitting and you just walk and you'll walk right to him. What have you done? Now, notice you didn't ask for wisdom. You didn't ask for a word. You, now you, you have appropriated, you've accessed the mind of Christ. That's how you're supposed to live all the time. Do you get that? We just do it every now and then, whenever there's a problem. <clears throat> but we should be doing it all the time. And you can do this all the time. You can know <clears throat> where to shop. You can know where the, I hate to say it this way, but know where the best deals are. Amen? You, you, listen, you can go into a store where you need something there, and when you get there, you start to, start to walk in and you start to go pick it up, but instead you go do something else. And when you come back, they've marked it down. Guess what that is? That's the mind of Christ. That's the way he works in you. And you think, I don't know why. Would I? You ever hear people, well, I don't know. Something just told me. No, someone just told you. Amen? Why? Because you accessed the mind of Christ. Now, you can ask for it or you can walk in it. But notice, he was made unto us wisdom sanctification, salvation. Isn't that right? Do you, do you get that? He was made that to you. In other words, that's part of your DNA. That's part of who you are, and you can walk in it. This is Christianity the way Jesus lived it. He not only knew things. I mean, who would have said, uh, go down and go fish and catch the first fish. It'll have coin in its mouth. He knew that, right? He knew that, and at the same time he said that, that fish had to get there. 
Do you get that? He could, he either knew where things, he knew things ahead of time, or he called things into being. He worked both ways. Do you get that? So there are times when you can know something, and there's other times whenever you can call things, and they will come into being as you need them. In other words, there'll be a, a situation. Do, do you understand what I'm saying here? This is walking in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us therefore walk in the Spirit. Well, if you live in something, you would think you're going to walk it. If I live in my house, I'm probably going to walk in my house. But guess what? I live in my house, but I ain't walking in my house right now, am I? Yeah. 